Here's our action. <clears throat> Whistle, nickel, and gross composite parts. And underneath the Whistle, Whistle nickel, and gross capstans. The uh, original leading was uh, pretty heavy out here, and with the lighter weight parts, uh, everything is too loose now. I've already knocked out one lead from every key in my preliminary uh, work. I mean, when you finding down weights of uh, 33 and stuff like that, there's no point in even going to the program quite yet. Uh, at any rate, it's still too light, so relative to our discussion at hand, we need to uh, remove more lead, either completely or partially remove leads by drilling through those leads to a certain amount. In other words, removing half the lead, for example, uh, where it already exists. You can see that, but like here's a couple that still exist. Now, a couple of notes on checking down weight. Number one, it's pointless unless your keys are free at the balance, at the front bushings, uh, everywhere else through the system, that there is no friction. New bushings can be very frustrating because even a little bit of tightness in the fronts or at the balance can throw it off by several grams. Uh, weighting a keyboard is something of a moving average because uh, after some use the bushings get a little glazed, a little freer and so forth and so uh, even there the down weight could change to a lower number six months from now but in any case we have to have some place to start we know that 65 grams down is just too much and we know that 42 grams down is too little we gotta find that range somewhere around 50 and uh, you know hope for the best right at any rate we are free in here so I wanna put some weights on and show you how I, I go about this uh, let's start with uh, C40. Now if I put 50 grams on the outside here, we see that the hammer just jumps up. It's too fast. 50 grams obviously overwhelms the key at this point. Now if I go the opposite extreme and put 40 on, nothing's happening. Now notice I'm uh, kind of helping it along here by breaking static friction. Now, static friction is always very much higher than dynamic friction, so it's okay to uh, hit it maybe once or twice, but always be consistent. I like to go twice, like that to break it, and, that, and the next one to bring it all the way up. In any case, 40 will not get it there. So let me try 45. That's two. One, two. 45 looks to me like it's the right number. Okay, so make a note in your uh, uh, sheets where you uh, write everything down. The uh, printout that comes with our program is nicely designed to uh, put all of this in there and then bring it over to the computer later for the other input that you'll see. But anyway, that's, uh, I would say that's 45, 46, somewhere in there. What I really want in this area is more like 49 or 50. So, it's too light still, meaning I need to remove uh, some lead someplace. And since there's two leads in there to work with, it would be silly to pop one out completely if I have some idea of how much of the existing lead to remove. And that's what this is about. Let's go to another one. I think it was um, G. Okay, let's try G. 47 and put 50 on there. This too also is too quick. And 40, I have to persuade it too much to get it up, as you can see. So let's take a guess and try 42.
Uh, I would say that's it. One, two, 42. Okay. Now you may be wondering about up weight. Um, up weight is important because the key needs to return as quickly as possible. But understand that up weight is related to down weight. In fact, it's really a proportion. Um, it's better to think that up weight should uh, minimally be 40% of down weight. So if down weight is 50 grams, 40% of 50 is 20, that key then should at least lift 20. It may lift more, that's okay, but oh, there goes my glue pot heating up on the side there. I should unplug that. If the key, uh, as in many of these right now, only lifts 40, I mean not lifts 40, uh, has a 40 gram down weight, I can't expect that to be lifting 20 grams. So 40% of 40 grams down is 16 grams up. So I would expect that to lift 16 grams up weight. If the spread is too much, uh, then you, you start looking for friction or binding or something like that in the key system. Okay, so uh, let's see. Mark all of your down weights on your sheet. And uh, since most of these are too light, again, that's what this program is primarily about. I'll show you how we next measure the key for the, where the weights exist and what the program shows us in order to remove a certain amount of weight from the existing lead. And we do that at the drill press, and uh, those are the next two things uh, that will be coming up. Okay, I think I've said all I want to you about up weight and down weight, um, at least relative to these things. That's a very big subject, but uh, I'm sure that you've got some idea on what I'm talking about here. Okay, till next time. Next, after all the down weights have been notated, you take out the keys that need some sort of lead modification. Of course, in our case, we're talking about lead reduction. We see a natural key and a millimeter scale here. And it's the key is basically positioned so that one end of the scale is about halfway the hole, the balance uh, rail hole. And we want to measure over from the balance rail hole to the position of the lead. Now lead number one has been removed. Lead number two, as you can see according to the scale, let's see if we get this, uh, get this right, it's about 165 as you can see. And lead number two is uh, Actually, if I get down over, it's about 132, okay? So, on our spreadsheet worksheet, we write down the position of this lead and this lead. We take out the next key, lay it on here, and then do the same thing. I don't think you need to measure and notate more than uh, uh, four leads. But that you'll kind of figure out as you go along. In any case, I know that the down weight on this key is too light. What I don't know until I run the program is what do I do? Do I have to pop this lead out? Uh, maybe this one's better. Maybe I should drill halfway through this one and, and a tab through this one and so on. So that's what our computer program is going to tell us. And we'll come back and, uh, and show you how we do that at the drill press. And then put the keys back in. Do another way off and see how close we got. All right. A few things to keep in mind uh, what the computer program needs to know, obviously. This is a, a weight that was removed from one of the keys. It's fairly standard. It's a half inch in diameter on its largest size, largest end. And it weighs 14.8 grams. The computer needs to know that as well. Uh, so it's best to work with the weights that you're actually removing from the keys and undoubtedly you'll have to remove at least one you can measure it. If for some reason you don't have to remove any knock one out anyway and then
put it back in after you've measured it. At any rate, it also measures 460 thousandths from end to end. So let's say round numbers. Let's say it weighs 15 grams. If I cut it in half, then each half would weigh 7.5 grams. Or if, I, if it was in the key and I drilled half of it away, I would leave 7.5 grams. If I d drilled only a third of it away, right, that would be 5 grams removed, leaving 10 grams. The total would be 15, of course. So, uh, the, the program works with the amount of weight in relation to uh, key leverage, not leverage, but uh, key uh, uh, ratios and so forth to uh, let us know how much lead we need to remove. But the program needs to know the weight, the size, and the distance from end to end. Now if it were 3 8 inch weight instead of half, we'd need to know that. If it were a larger weight, like the, the I forget what the next size, 9 16 maybe, um, I think there's even a 5 8 inch. Anyway, the weight, end to end dimension, and uh, this the uh, diameter size. All right, so we'll get over to the drill press now. All right, here at the computer, <clears throat> we see our test was 45 grams down, but what we really want is 50 grams down. This is key number one, so we have this blue flag showing up, basically telling us yes, we need to remove some lead from this key. The lead position, the first lead out, is at 114 millimeters. And at that position of that lead, <clears throat> we need to take out 10 grams of lead from the key lead itself right there. The drill out column tells us that for that particular lead we need to drill down 293 thousandths of an inch, thereby leaving in place 147 thousandths of an inch of lead. Now if this were in a different position, we have 114 there, but what if it was, um, I can just make one up here, what if it was 125? Well now we see instead of 10 grams to come out, it's 9.12 grams of lead to come out meaning we drill down 268 thousandths and leave 172 thousandths and on and on it goes uh, if the down weight instead of 45 was 47 47 grams was our test with the gram weights but we want 50 so we need to remove 5.47 at this lead position drilling out 161 thousandths and leaving 279. Now I could go on because there's lead 2 and there's lead 3 which I think is outside the camera. Um, and all of these things will come into play uh, depending on where your leads are located, what your downweight test was, and what your downweight desired amount was. So you basically follow the instructions, drill out where it tells you to drill out and uh, you'll be in good shape. So that's a, a very quick run through. Uh, there are many more things here at this particular site which is probably too small a font for you to see right now. But here you can enter your down weight and up weights for all of your notes and the friction will be calculated. If the friction is too high it will show up as red flags. If it's too low it will show up with green colored cells. The balance weight incidentally is also computed from there and there's much more here than I can go into at this point. Very quick run through but um, it's a very effective program. Okay at the drill press a couple of preliminary observations. The uh, program has told us how much lead to remove and we're going to do that with a Forstner bit. Now we're working with one half inch leads pretty much exclusively through this keyboard 
so we have a one half inch Forstner bit. Now the chips that this makes come off in these uh, these uh, strands, as you can see. Okay, they won't hurt you. They're not like steel chips and strands coming off metal working machines exactly, and they're uh, rather flexible and, and brittle. Nonetheless, I still have a dust collector set up here that will grab most of the stuff. Now, you will see, once we start drilling a lead, so we put a key in here, like so. Alright, now I like to drill from the back side, where there is a slight indentation in the wood. Alright, so I'm going to turn on the uh, dust collection system, put on my eye protection, and show what it's like. In the first position, what was required was to remove uh, about 230, about, or about half the lead distance, uh, or thickness if you will. Remember that these leads are 460 thousandths end to end, and I had to remove half of that one and then almost half of the second one. You can see the first one was popped out completely, so that shows you how much lighter the system has been made. Alright, now what else can I say here? Um, what some folks like to do is remove all the leads and plug all the holes. I found that gets a little bit sloppy later when you have to drill through, partially through a, uh, a plug and part of the original wood and so forth. Um, I just think this is a much neater way to go. I know what else I wanted to say. It's my own personal view, but I don't think I want to remove more than half of an existing lead. Let's say what was required to, was to remove 400 thousandths. Well, that would only leave a small shell uh, on the opposite side. So, And if you feel better, you can drop a little CA glue in each of these to make sure that they stay put. I don't think it's required, though. All right, so program has told us how much to remove. Uh, most of the time you're only removing something from the first existing lead, but sometimes the program tells you you need to take something off the second lead. Um, I have yet to see where the third lead comes in, except that in this case I removed the very first one, as you can see. Well, that's the idea. So we follow through on all the keys this way, and then uh, put it back in the system and weigh off and see how we look. All right. uh, another drilling technique is to take small bites. Okay, here's a little video of working with these calipers. You can get them at um, Woodworker Supply or on Amazon. They're called eye gauging and they are perfect for this job. As you can see, they'll give us an outside dimension. Now, this particular key has a lead showing on one side and the other side is blind. So we have to use this gauge by setting it like so and then zeroing it out. 
you won't be able to see me do this on camera but the idea is you set it like so and then zero it out and then as you reduce the lead this dimension will keep on reducing and you'll be able to read it in the display how much lead you're actually removing now if the lead were shown from both sides you would not need to zero it out we just use them in the ordinary fashion and just keep checking as you drill a little bit of lead out each time uh, you run the bit until you get to your target dimension so this is the ticket all right on this um, I'm zeroing it out I'm off screen and there we go so I need to remove about eighty thousandths of an inch uh, of this lead where are we don't mean to make you dizzy and if you're wondering where I got these really cool gloves uh, it was Home Depot all right here we go at 79 so I went just a little bit past it so I needed 80 at 79 uh, thousandths removed and so I'm happy with that that's going to be um, nice nice work also it's a nice clean job it's the kind of thing that when you put it back in the piano and your customers see it or other piano technicians see it this is a quality looking job all right kids onward and upwards Right here is the uh, dial press from Scott Jones that uh, I used to punch leads out. Now, let's notice something about this key. There are two leads. There's a small one in the the half inch size here. Now, let's look at the small one. On the other side, it's blind. In fact, this large one too also is blind on this side. But if you punch the key out in this direction, you're going to split the wood, for sure, coming out this way. Um, now notice another thing. Many old Steinways have a little dimple, not a dimple, but a little tiny uh, punch hole here, or drill hole, that is the center of the, of the uh, lead that's on the other side. So what I did, since I want to punch the lead out, the large lead out from this side, as I took it over to the drill press and ran a half inch Forstner bit just enough to expose uh, the lead on this side. Now it's an easy matter just to punch this out in the proper direction without splitting the wood uh, on either side. There it goes. So we have a nice a nice clean. Now if I were uh, obviously I'd be punching it out because I don't want it anymore and in order to fill this hole with a nice plug is uh, uh, another video but basically it's a 9 16 inch hole I just do what I can to, to center that right over that it's pretty easy to do by eye and drill it all the way through make sure you're backed up on this side and then simply insert the um, poplar wood plugs that come from Piano Tech in there they'll be a little too wide this way so uh, glue it in so it's flush on one side and then the other side you have to trim off with uh, chisels and some careful work at a, at a sander but that's uh, that's for another video now something from the drilling video that I want to point out and remind you about was that you heard me tell you that uh, you have options as to how you're going to measure this thing and I mentioned that if it's blind on this side you need to zero out the calipers like so and then as you reduce this lead uh, your dimension that you require will show up in the display however if it's exposed from both sides now these are already drilled out so 
I can still make the point though, if it's uh, exposed from both sides then you can set it in the usual way that you would use calipers like this but the dimension you're going to, you're going to get is what's left in the hole not how much you have taken out of the hole so the program shows you both dimensions how much to leave and how much to drill out just pay attention that uh, however you're doing it you consider you can you I'll get it right however you're doing it um, that you pay attention to do it the same way uh, each time then you won't make uh, a mistake okay When you're drilling to add a lead, as I am on the back side of this key number 887, I like to go in two passes and flip it over. Okay, back at the keyboard, we have installed the stack again. All of the key LEDs have been partially drilled out according to the data we kept and the computer program that we ran. And so you see a little group of weights here, these weigh 49 grams, which is how we decided to work this out from uh, about C40 down is uh, in the 50 range and then from C sharp up a good ways it's 49 so how do we look was a little quick. A little bit quick. Pretty darn good. I'm real happy with the way this turned out. really very consistent. Now the drilling that I did in each key, I hit the target depths as close as I can, but you're never going to hit them perfectly well. Uh, but you need to be virtually perfect as you, as you go through. Corrections of course can be made. If uh, like there was one or two there that were a little on the quick side here at 49, which means they're probably more like 48. I don't think I'm going to be concerned with that, especially at this stage of the game. Uh, the action needs to be more perfectly regulated. It's, the piano is going to be tuned. The action is going to be in and out, you know, many times, uh, and so on. Uh, the bushings are going to work themselves in better. All of that sort of thing. So the real picture of what's going on here isn't going to be apparent until this piano has actually been played and tuned for a while. Uh, any modifications I want to make, I will, I'm going to wait until the very end of this you know, and, and, then, and even then only if I see a gross discrepancy where if I want 49 uh, I'm really getting 46 if I wanted 50 I'm really getting 52 and, and stuff like that but uh, those would be selected keys uh, throughout so this has really got us in the ballpark and uh, I'm very pleased and it's much quicker and neater 
than uh, just popping all of the uh, leads out and uh, plugging and then reweighing off uh, everything as you go. Anyway, that's the system, and um, there's probably something I'm leaving out for the moment, and uh, the, you know the feel. You can tell right now there's a very nice evenness throughout here, and I'll think of what I've left out and uh, bring that up before I complete the uh, the video. So I think it's pretty cool. I hope you do too. Okay, as you can see, the process throws off some waste. Like so much of the work we do with wood, sawdust, lacquer dust, lacquer spray, etc. The dust collector picks up the, the airborne stuff and the lighter particles, which is a, a, a good thing, of course, and you'll have to sweep up uh, the rest of it. Now, this kind of work, like so much of the work I do with wood, uh, requires protection. Eye protection, a good dust mask or respirator, depending on the situation. Uh, coveralls are very important, otherwise you're going to track particles into your house. Um, gloves, which also should not go into the house. and depending on the operation shoes that never go into the house so everything stays out in the shop I especially use this setup when I'm working on all the spruce pieces for belly work and so on uh, I live in this arrangement sometimes days at a time as I'm sure some of you do um, as well and again like I said working with lead uh, you have to take precautions just like you do with lacquer and wood dust and wood particles and so forth.